7월 8일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경통독 오늘은 여호수아 10장 10편 142편 143편 에레미야 4장 마태복음 18장 함께 읽도록 하겠습니다. July 8, Joshua chapter 10 Adoni Zedek was the king of Jerusalem. He heard that Joshua had captured Ai. He found out that the city had been set apart to the Lord in a special way to be destroyed. He heard that Joshua had done to Ai and its king the same thing he had done to Jericho and its king. Adoni Zedek heard that the people of Gibeon had made a peace treaty with Israel. He also found out that they were living among the Israelites. The things he heard alarmed him and his people very much. That's because Gibeon was an important city. It was like one of the royal cities. It was larger than I. All its men were good soldiers. So Adoni Zedek, the king of Jerusalem, made an appeal to Hoham, the king of Hebron. He appealed to Param, the king of Jarmuth. He appealed to Japhia, the king of Lachish. He also made an appeal to Debir, the king of Eglon. Come up and help me attack Gibeon, he said. Its people have made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish and Eglon gathered their armies together. Those five Amorite kings moved all their troops into position to fight against Gibeon. Then they attacked it. Joshua was in the camp at Gilgal. The people of Gibeon sent a message to him there. They said, Don't desert us. We serve you. Come up to us quickly. Save us. Help us. All the Amorite kings from the central hill country have gathered their armies together to fight against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his whole army. The army included all his best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to fight against you and win. Joshua marched all night from Gilgal. He took the Amorite armies by surprise. The Lord threw them into a panic as Israel marched toward them. Then Joshua and the Israelites won a complete victory over them at Gibeon. The Israelites chased them along the road that goes up to Beth Horon. They struck them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. The Amorites tried to escape as Israel marched toward them. They ran down the road from Beth Horon to Azekah. Then the Lord threw large hailstones down on them. The hailstones killed more of them than the swords of the Israelites did. So the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. On that day Joshua spoke to the Lord while the Israelites were listening. He said, Sun, stand still over Gibeon. And you, Moon, stand still over the valley of Ijalon. So the sun stood still. The moon stopped. They didn't move again until the nation won the battle over its enemies. You can read about it in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky. It didn't go down for about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. It was a day when the Lord listened to a mere human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Joshua and his whole army returned to the camp at Gilgal. The five Amorite kings had run away. They had hidden in the cave at Makeda. Joshua was told that the five kings had been found. He was also told that they were hiding in the cave at Makeda. He said, roll some large rocks up to the opening of the cave. Put some men there to guard it. But keep on going. Chase your enemies. Attack them from behind. Don't let them get back to their cities. The Lord your God has handed them over to you. So Joshua and the men of Israel had complete victory over them. They killed almost every one of them. But a few escaped. They went back to their cities that had high walls around them. 
Then Israel's whole army returned safely to Joshua. He was in the camp at Mechida. No one in the land dared to say anything against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open up the cave. Bring those five kings out to me. So Joshua's men brought the kings out of the cave. They were the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish and Eglon. The men brought them to Joshua. Then he sent for all the men of Israel. He spoke to the army commanders who had come with him. He said, Come here. Put your feet on the necks of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on the necks of the kings. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid. Don't lose hope. Be strong and brave. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Joshua put the five kings to death. He stuck a pole through each of their bodies. Then he set the poles up where people could see the bodies. He left them there until evening. At sunset Joshua ordered his men to take down the bodies. So they took them down from the poles and threw them into the cave where the kings had been hiding. They placed large rocks at the opening of the cave. And the rocks are still there to this day. That day Joshua captured Makeda. He cut down its people and their king. He totally destroyed everyone in it. He didn't leave anyone alive. He did to the king of Makeda the same thing he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua moved on from Makeda to Libna. Israel's whole army went with him. They attacked Libna. The Lord also handed that city and its king over to Israel. Joshua destroyed the city. He and his men killed everyone in it with their swords. He didn't leave anyone alive there. He did to its king the same thing he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua moved on from Libna to Lachish. Israel's whole army went with him. The men took up their battle positions. Then Joshua attacked Lachish. The Lord handed it over to Israel. Joshua captured the city on the second day of the battle. He destroyed the city. He and his men killed everyone in it with their swords. He had done the same thing to Libna. While all that was happening, Horam had come up to help Lachish. He was the king of Gezer. But Joshua won the battle over him and his army. No one was left alive. Joshua moved on from Lachish to Eglon. Israel's whole army went with him. They took up their battle positions. Then they attacked Eglon. They captured it that same day. They totally destroyed everyone in it with their swords. They had done the same thing to Lachish. Joshua went up from Eglon to Hebron. Israel's whole army went with him. Then they attacked Hebron. They captured the city. They destroyed it and its villages. They killed all its people and their king with their swords. They didn't leave anyone alive. They totally destroyed the city and everyone in it. They had done the same thing at Eglon. Joshua turned back and attacked Debir. Israel's whole army went with him. They captured the city, its king and its villages. They totally destroyed everyone in Debir with their swords. They didn't leave anyone alive. They did to Debir and its king the same thing they had done to Libna and its king. They had also done the same thing to Hebron. So Joshua brought the whole area under his control. That included the central hill country and the Negev desert. It included the western hills and the mountain slopes. It also included all the kings in that whole area. Joshua didn't leave anyone alive. He totally destroyed everyone who breathed. He did just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua brought everyone from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza under his control. He did the same thing to everyone from the whole area of Goshen to Gibeon. He won the battle over all those kings and their lands. He did it in one campaign. That's because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. 
Then Joshua returned to the camp at Gilgal. Israel's whole army went with him. Psalm chapter 142 A prayer of David when he was in the cave. Amaskal. I call out to the Lord. I pray to him for mercy. I pour out my problem to him. I tell him about my trouble. When I grow weak, you are watching over my life. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a trap to catch me. Look and see that no one is on my right side to help me. No one is concerned about me. I have no place of safety. No one cares whether I live or die. Lord, I cry out to you. I say, you are my place of safety. You are everything I need in this life. Listen to my cry. I am in great need. Save me from those who are chasing me. They are too strong for me. My troubles are like a prison. Set me free so I can praise your name. Then those who do what is right will gather around me because you have been good to me. Psalm chapter 143 A Psalm of David Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. You are faithful and right. Come and help me. Don't take me to court and judge me, because in your eyes no living person does what is right. My enemies chase me. They crush me down to the ground. They make me live in the darkness like those who died long ago. So I grow weak. Deep down inside me, I'm afraid. I remember what happened long ago. I spend time thinking about all your acts. I consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you in prayer. I'm thirsty for you, just as dry ground is thirsty for rain. Lord, answer me quickly. I'm growing weak. Don't turn your face away from me, or I will be like those who go down into the grave. In the morning let me hear about your faithful love, because I've put my trust in you. Show me the way I should live, because I trust you with my life. Lord, save me from my enemies, because I go to you for safety. Teach me to do what you want, because you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on a level path. Lord, bring yourself honor by keeping me alive. Because you do what is right, get me out of trouble. Because your love is faithful, put an end to my enemies. Destroy all of them, because I serve you. Jeremiah 4 If you, Israel, will return, announces the Lord. Then return to me, put the statues of your gods out of my sight. I hate them. Stop going astray. Make all your promises in my name. When you promise say, you can be sure that the Lord is alive. Be truthful, fair and honest when you make these promises. Then the nations will ask for blessings from me. And they will boast about me. Here is what the Lord is telling the people of Judah and Jerusalem. He says, your hearts are as hard as a field that has not been plowed. So change your ways and produce good crops. Do not plant seeds among thorns. People of Judah and you who live in Jerusalem, obey me. Do not let your hearts be stubborn. If you do, my anger will blaze out against you. It will burn like fire because of the evil things you have done. No one will be able to put it out. Announce my message in Judah. Tell it in Jerusalem. Say, blow trumpets all through the land. Give a loud shout and say, gather together. Let's run to cities that have high walls around them. Warn everyone to go to Zion. Run for safety. Do not wait. I am bringing trouble from the north. Everything will be totally destroyed. Lions have come out of their dens. Those who destroy nations have begun to march out. They have left their place to destroy your land completely. Your towns will be broken to pieces. No one will live in them. 
So put on the clothes of sadness. Mourn and weep over what has happened. The Lord hasn't turned his great anger away from us. A dark day is coming, announces the Lord. The king and his officials will lose hope. The priests will be shocked. And the prophets will be terrified. Then I said, You are my Lord and King. You have completely tricked the people of Judah and Jerusalem. You have told them, You will have peace and rest. But swords are pointed at our throats. At that time the people of Judah and Jerusalem will be warned. They will be told, A hot and dry wind is coming, my people. It is blowing toward you from the bare hilltops in the desert. But it does not separate straw from grain. It is much too strong for that. The wind is coming from me. I am making my decision against you. Look. Our enemies are approaching like the clouds. Their chariots are coming like a strong wind. Their horses are faster than eagles. How terrible it will be for us. We'll be destroyed. People of Jerusalem, wash your sins from your hearts and be saved. How long will you hold on to your evil thoughts? A voice is speaking all the way from the city of Dan. From the hills of Ephraim it announces that trouble is coming. Tell the nations. Make an announcement concerning Jerusalem. Say, an army will attack Judah. It is coming from a land far away. It will shout a war cry against the cities of Judah. It will surround them like people who guard a field. Judah has refused to obey me, announces the Lord. The army will attack you because of your conduct and actions. This is how you will be punished. It will be so bitter. It will cut deep down into your hearts. I'm suffering. I'm really suffering. I'm hurting badly. My heart is suffering so much. It's pounding inside me. I can't keep silent. I've heard the sound of trumpets. I've heard the battle cry. One trouble follows another. The whole land is destroyed. In an instant my tents are gone. My home disappears in a moment. How long must I look at our enemy's battle flag? How long must I hear the sound of the trumpets? The Lord says, My people are foolish. They do not know me. They are children who do not have any sense. They have no understanding at all. They are skilled in doing what is evil. They do not know how to do what is good. I looked at the earth. It didn't have any shape. And it was empty. I looked at the sky. Its light was gone. I looked at the mountains. They were shaking. All the hills were swaying. I looked. And there weren't any people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked. And the fruitful land had become a desert. All its towns were destroyed. The Lord had done all this because of his great anger. The Lord says, the whole land will be destroyed. But I will not destroy it completely. So the earth will be filled with sadness. The sky above will grow dark. I have spoken, and I will not take pity on them. I have made my decision, and I will not change my mind. People can hear the sound of horsemen. Men armed with bows are coming. The people in every town run away. Some of them go into the bushes. Others climb up among the rocks. All the towns are deserted. No one is living in them. What are you doing, you who are destroyed? Why do you dress yourself in bright red clothes? Why do you put on jewels of gold? Why do you put makeup on your eyes? You make yourself beautiful for no reason at all. Your lovers hate you. They want to kill you. I hear a cry like the cry of a woman having a baby. I hear a groan like someone having her first child. It's the cry of the people of Zion struggling to breathe. They reach out their hands and say, help us. We're fainting. Murderers are about to kill us. Matthew chapter 18
At that time the disciples came to Jesus. They asked him, Then who is the most important person in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child over to him. He had the child stand among them. Jesus said, What I'm about to tell you is true. You need to change and become like little children. If you don't, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who takes the humble position of this child is the most important in the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who welcomes a little child like this one in my name welcomes me. What if someone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin? If they do, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned at the bottom of the sea. How terrible it will be for the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Things like that must come. But how terrible for the person who causes them. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It would be better to enter the kingdom of heaven with only one hand than go into hell with two hands. It would be better to enter the kingdom of heaven with only one foot than go into hell with two feet. In hell the fire burns forever. If your eye causes you to sin, poke it out and throw it away. It would be better to enter the kingdom of heaven with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you don't look down on one of these little ones. Here is what I tell you. Their angels in heaven are always with my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? Suppose a man owns one hundred sheep and one of them wanders away. Won't he leave the ninety-nine sheep on the hills? Won't he go and look for the one that wandered off? What I'm about to tell you is true. If he finds that sheep, he is happier about the one than about the ninety-nine that didn't wander off. It is the same with your father in heaven. He does not want any of these little ones to die. If your brother or sister sins against you, go to them. Tell them what they did wrong. Keep it between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them back. But what if they won't listen to you? Then take one or two others with you. Scripture says, Every matter must be proved by the words of two or three witnesses. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15, But what if they also refuse to listen to the witnesses? Then tell it to the church. And what if they refuse to listen even to the church? Then don't treat them as a brother or sister. Treat them as you would treat an ungodly person or a tax collector. What I'm about to tell you is true. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. Again, here is what I tell you. Suppose two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for. My Father in heaven will do it for you. Where two or three people gather in my name, I am there with them. Peter came to Jesus. He asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to collect all the money his servants owed him. As the king began to do it, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. The man was not able to pay. So his master gave an order. The man, his wife, his children, and all he owned had to be sold to pay back what he owed. Then the servant fell on his knees in front of him. Give me time, he begged. I'll pay everything back. His master felt sorry for him. He forgave him what he owed and let him go. But then that servant went out and found one of the other servants who owed him one hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he said. The other servant fell on his knees. Give me time, he begged him. I'll pay it back, but the first servant refused. Instead, he went and had the man thrown into prison. The man would be held there until he could pay back what he owed. The other servants saw what had happened and were very angry. 
they went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the first servant in. You evil servant, he said. I forgave all that you owed me because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on the other servant just as I had mercy on you? In anger his master handed him over to the jailers. He would be punished until he paid back everything he owed. This is how my Father in heaven will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart.